After two and a half centuries of enslavement in the United States where black people were tortured, abused, sexually assaulted, killed, and subjected to forced labor, emancipation finally came at the end of the Civil War with the ratification of the 13th Amendment in 1865. Most formerly enslaved people in the United States were remarkably willing to live peacefully with those who had held them in bondage despite the violence they had suffered and the degradation they endured. Emancipated black people put aside their enslavement and embraced education, hard work, faith, and citizenship. This period called Reconstruction held great hope for America and black Americans in particular. But the Reconstruction era's initial hope for progress gave way to devastating, deadly violence. Between 1865 and 1876, thousands of black women, men, and children were attacked, killed, and terrorized by white people who were shielded from arrest and prosecution. During the Memphis Massacre of 1866, white mobs indiscriminately beat, robbed, tortured, shot, raped, and killed black women, men, and children. In the course of three days, 90 black homes were destroyed and all black schools and churches were burned to the ground. Black residents were stripped of their belongings and forced to flee into the woods. There was no criminal prosecution against the white instigators of the Memphis Massacre, one of hundreds of such incidents during this period. The surge of anti-black violence prompted Congress to approve the first Reconstruction Act in February 1867 to ensure that black people's equality would be reinforced. In 1868, the 14th Amendment declared all persons born in the country were citizens regardless of race and thus entitled to privileges of citizenship, due process, and equal protection. Over 80% of eligible black men registered to vote, schools for black children became a priority, and courageous black leaders overcame enormous obstacles to win elections to public office. This triggered a violent backlash from those within the white community who could not accept black equality. In Opelousas, Louisiana, in September 1868, white citizens terrorized the community to suppress black voter turnout in the upcoming election. White mobs roamed the countryside for several weeks, targeting black citizens and their white allies, murdering an estimated 200 people. Other massacres of hundreds of black people took place in New Orleans, Colfax, and parishes throughout Louisiana. Violence spread from Texas to North Carolina, where white mobs sought to intimidate and deprive black people of their rights. Despite being continuously terrorized by their former enslavers, the black community mobilized throughout the South by organizing meetings, parades, and petitions calling for the implementation of their legal and political rights, including the right to vote. In 1870, the United States ratified the 15th Amendment, explicitly prohibiting racial discrimination in voting. But still, most white people refused to accept black citizenship. In both the North and the South, there was tremendous resistance to the idea of black equality. On October 10, 1871, African-American activist and Union Army veteran Octavius Cato left the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania school where he served as a teacher and administrator and headed to the polls to cast his ballot in the city's mayoral election. Mr. Cato successfully cast his vote, but on his way home from the polls, he was assassinated by Frank Kelly, who had ties to white supremacist party leaders and who was later acquitted by an all-white jury. Being attacked or killed on an election day was a common reality for black citizens. During Reconstruction, an estimated 2,000 black men served in elected office from local and state positions all the way up to Congress but increased political participation came at a cost of increased white violence against the black community. In Vicksburg, Mississippi, in December 1874, where black people gathered to protest the removal of their elected black sheriff from office, white mobs attacked and killed at least 50 of them. And then, in 1877, just 12 years after emancipation, the meager progress that was made towards securing equal rights for black citizens was abandoned when political compromise with Confederate holdouts resulted in the removal of the last federal troops from the South. The commitment to abolish chattel slavery was not accompanied by a commitment to equal rights or equal protection for African Americans, and the hope of Reconstruction quickly became a nightmare of unparalleled violence and oppression. It was during Reconstruction that a century-long era of racial hierarchy 
lynching, white supremacy, and bigotry was established, an era from which the nation has yet to recover. One and a half centuries after the Emancipation Declaration, racial injustice persists in America. EJI presents this report on the tragic period of Reconstruction to describe its implications for the issues we face today. We believe our nation has failed to acknowledge our history of racial terror and that we must commit to a new era of truth-telling, followed by meaningful efforts to repair and remedy the continuing legacy of racial injustice. Yeah.